So let's say you have a patient who just came back from getting a CT who has the following labs. So an elevated K level, elevated BUN level, and elevated creatinine level, along with decreased urine output and a really ugly looking UA. What do you think is going on? Well, all this points to something being wrong with the kidneys. And so what our patient has is acute kidney injury or AKI. The question now is what do you want to do for this patient? And that's what I'm hoping to cover in this video. We'll first talk briefly about how you know the kidney is injured, the differential diagnosis for AKI, and what steps you should take to evaluate it. First up, how do you know? What a kidney normally does is it filters your blood. And so if it's injured, it can't do that as well or at all, resulting in decreased urine production and decreased GFR. However, GFR is hard to measure exactly. And so what we use instead is the serum creatinine, which isn't ideal, but good enough. So essentially an increase in creatinine from baseline is what we often use to evaluate for kidney injury. And not surprisingly, there's a criteria that helps us define this. The rifle criteria is the one that I'm most familiar with and that most people use. Essentially, it defines three levels of kidney injury into risk, injury, and failure. Based mostly on creatinine, but also on GFR and urine output. For the sake of time and simplicity, I'll just use creatinine you're believed to be in the at-risk category if you have an at least 1.5 times increase in creatinine from baseline. You're believed to be in the injury level with a two times increase in baseline creatinine. And you're in the failure category if you have at least a three times increase in baseline creatinine. I wanna emphasize this because this might cause some confusion. Even if you're at the at-risk category only, you still technically have AKI. Okay, so now you know that your patient has AKI or acute kidney injury. Now what? You want to figure out what's causing a kidney injury. And the differential diagnosis for this is fortunately pretty straightforward. It includes free renal causes, meaning decreased perfusion to the kidneys of some etiology, such as shock, severe bleeding, CHF, cirrhosis, or blockage of renal arteries, renal causes, meaning direct damage to the kidneys, such as acute interstitial nephritis, acute tubular necrosis, nephritic disease, nephrotic disease, etc., or post-renal causes, meaning something after the kidneys in a urinary tract, most often an obstruction somewhere, that's causing urine to back up into the kidneys, such as BPH, prostate cancer, neurogenic bladder, etc. In order to determine which of the three is the cause of the kidney injury, the following is the basic standard workup that is performed, and I'll also list some findings that are suggestive of either a pre-renal, renal, or post-renal cause. Patient history is going to be very important. Knowing what happened to your patient most of the time will tell you what's likely happening or at least point you in the right direction. For example, if your patient recently bled two liters of blood or is in septic shock, a pre-renal cause is more likely. If your patient was recently given IV contrast, then a renal cause is more likely. If your patient has a history of BPH, then post-renal cause is more likely. Similar to a history, a physical exam is going to be very important. Vital signs and other findings such as edema, JVP, cap refill, etc. can tell you about the volume status. Ins and outs can tell you the insult is improving or worsening. Systemic symptoms and findings could make you more suspicious of a systemic cause that's also directly damaging the kidneys. And a rectal exam can tell you if a patient's prostate is enlarged. Aside from a classic history and physical, there's also a host of labs and tests we can use to help us determine the etiology of the AKI. A very important one is looking directly at the urine. Both with a urine dipstick and with microscopy, there are a lot of findings that suggest a renal cause, and a complete absence of any findings suggests, but in no way confirms, either a pre-renal or a post-renal cause. For example, finding protein in dipstick suggests a renal cause such as glomerular disease. Blood in the urine and red blood cell casts also suggest a glomerular, aka renal cause. Muddy brown casts suggest acute tubular necrosis, another renal cause. White cell casts suggest acute interstitial nephritis, 
often caused by drug reactions in the renal tubules. A good way to differentiate between pre-renal and renal causes is to calculate the phena, or the fractional excretion of sodium. To calculate this value, take the urinary sodium divided by the serum sodium, and do the same for creatinine. So urinary creatinine divided by serum creatinine. Then divide the resultant fractures into each other, the sodium one divided by the creatinine one. Since this is a percentage, multiply by 100. The resulting number is the phena. A phena under 1% suggests a pre-renal cause, and a phena about 2% suggests a renal cause. I want to emphasize here that being pre-renal and having ATN, a renal cause, is a progression of the same disease. If you're pre-renal, it means your kidney isn't getting enough perfusion, but it's still not damaged yet. But if it goes on for long enough, then renal cells can start to get ischemic and get damaged, resulting in ATN. Lastly, you also want to get an ultrasound to look for signs of obstruction. A CT is another option, but it isn't usually first line. Now, these are the bare basics of evaluating acute kidney injury, but other common things that might also be indicated include serologies to look for a more specific renal cause, such as ANA, ANCA, anti-GBM, complement levels, or cryoglobulins, uh, or a kidney biopsy. However, since we're running out of time, I won't cover these here. Before we end, I just want to emphasize some things to watch out for, as patients with AKI can get pretty sick. You want to watch their K levels, as increased potassium levels promote arrhythmia. You want to monitor their acid-base status, as they can become severely acidotic. You also want to monitor for signs of fluid overload. If your patient decompensates enough, he could require dialysis and I'll go over the indications for dialysis in another video for you. Now, here are our take-home points for this video, along with our sources. Thanks for watching.